What's up guys? Um, it is time for the Mac OS X or Mac OS X Macintosh Tips and Tricks Part 2. Let's get right to it. <laughs> Okay, very first trick of the part two of this video is that you can do simple calculations of math in your spotlight. If you guys don't know what spotlight is, it is in the top right corner of your Mac, this little magnification glass. What it does, if you click on it, it allows you to search for anything on your hard drive and to launch it from there. Now, usually if you want to do some calculations on your computer, you would go to your calculator app and it would open up your calculator right here then you would enter up whatever you want and you would do it like that a much easier way to do this is to simply click in the spotlight and type in your equation on your keyboard so for example if you want to do 55 times 12 it will give you the answer right there 660 uh, it works with division, multiplication, subtraction, and addition, and it's very handy. It's, it's just really fast. It's a very unique way to do calculations on your Mac. All right, next up, uh, we have a trick that was mentioned or asked about in my previous video. Someone was wondering how I switched between windows of my computer just by doing this. And it's a very, very simple way. Apple put this into Leopard and um, to optimize this or to set it up you're gonna have to go to your system preferences so go ahead and open that go ahead and open up your expose and spaces panel and then switch to your spaces tab make sure you have enable spaces checked on and that means it will be turned on here you can manage the number of rows and columns that you can that you want in your spaces so if you want Another row, it'll give you 12 and 16. Right now, I only want 8, and this is what I have. Here you have application assignments, which uh, basically you can assign different applications to different spaces. So say you want iTunes in one space, so and, and as soon as you launch iTunes, it'll go to that space directly. Pretty handy, but I don't use that. And then here you can optimize your hotkeys to activate it. My hotkey is F19, so as soon as I press F19, this would come up and you can browse around your spaces you can click hold drag to whatever space you want to move you can also click and hold drag the window in the space and then drag it into a different space let go and uh, it's gonna go over here so that's space that's how you move around different windows my hotkey to move around or to move spaces is control left and right that's what I use this trick is a pretty small trick but it could it could come very handy if you're having problems with your network so over here on your menu bar you have the network icon and as soon as you click on it the list of networks will come up and you have the option to oops you have the option to turn off the net network or your airport and then choose different networks and then a few other options so right now I'm connected to my network, which is the Apple logo, and it works fine. However, if you're browsing through the internet and a page is not loading or something is wrong or something is really, really slow, a good way to fix this problem or to find out this problem, what's happening, is to hold down Option and then click on this icon on your menu bar. Then you will see a bunch of, well, bunch of information about the network under the name of it so it'll tell you the channel the RSSI and the transmit rate what you want to look here mostly is your transmit rate uh, people different people have different types of transmit rates and mine is usually supposed to be at 130 and that's 130 megabytes per second and right now it's at 59 so if I'm browsing the internet it's gonna be a bit slow so make sure yours is at your regular um, megabytes per second or your transmit rate or else your internet will work slow that's how you check of how
faster your transmit radius of your network. Alright, here, when you want to know the specific specifications of your computer, you usually go up to the Apple and then click about this Mac and it'll give you a general idea. Then when you click more info, if you want more information, it'll give you all of your contents and the overviews of everything on that your computer holds. An easier way, instead of going to the Apple, then about this Mac, then more info, and opening up the system profiler, is to just go to the Apple and hit option, and automatically the about this Mac will change to a system profiler. Click on that, and system profile will open up instead of your about this Mac window. This next trick has to do with your finder and the visual appearance of it. When I open my finder, it launches or opens up in my applications window. And maybe it's a little different for you because your icon sizes are not the same. And you can customize the way your finder looks simply by hitting Command J on your keyboard. And this little window will open up. You can change your icon size from this little little icon or button that you can click, hold, and drag. So let's say you want it smaller, you're just gonna drag it to the left, and as you can see, my icons in my finder are becoming smaller. If you want it bigger, drag it to the right, and the icons become huge. So right now, I'll just keep it at 80, 80 for my preference. Below that, you can also change your grid spacing. Grid spacing means the spacing between your icons. So right now I'm at max, but if you want the icons closer together, just drag it to the left and so will the icons just like that. Really compressed together. And at the bottom you can change a few other options with your font, uh, label position, arrange by, whatever. And here you can also change your background. So right now the background is white, or you can change it to a color. So let's say you want it as red and it'll change red. Or if you want a picture, you can go ahead and select that and the picture will come up. Pretty neat. This little next tip or trick as you can call it, I learned from just an accident I can see. It has to do with YouTube and when you're watching video. So let's say um, you're watching any random video on YouTube and you're playing through the video. What's up everybody? Welcome to the very first episode. And you hate dragging your mouse all the way over to the pause button when you need to pause it. So I don't know when YouTube did this, but if you if you click in the window of the video and the video is playing. Episode of Surfing with Sam, I am your host, Sam. And then if you want to pause the video, instead of going to pause, you can simply hit the space bar on your keyboard and the video would pause. I honestly never knew that. I don't know about everyone else, but it was pretty new to me, so I thought I would share it. All right, this next trick has to do with speeding up your Safari when it comes to loading pages and uh, just cleaning it up a little bit. So I'm sure most of you know this, know, know this trick or tip, but you should do this um, quite often about one to two weeks or maybe even every month. Uh, you should reset your Safari and to that you can just go by to Safari and then click on reset Safari. Then this window will come up and it'll ask you to are you sure you want to reset Safari. What this will do is it will just one, run one script and it will clear the history, empty the cache, clear the downloads window, remove all cookies, remove all website icons, remove the save names and passwords, remove other autofill form text. Clear Google searches and close all Safari windows. Um, this, you, you don't have to do all of these. You can uncheck them and then click reset. But this is what basically is the main thing that cleans up your Safari. And from time to time, it will run slower uh, because of uh, all this junk, all this cache coming in it. And all you have to do is just click reset and it will be reset. It doesn't take long at all less than a second and a new window of Safari will pop up if um, the first one closes. Just thought I'd let you guys know how to
clean it up a little bit.